Hello everyone, welcome to, welcome to chapter 14 of Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. I do hope you're enjoying the series so far. Please remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. And without further ado, let us begin. Chapter 14, Two Days Until Christmas. In a faraway land, a different song rode on the wind, making Christmas. The Christmas town elves exclaimed... But instead of talking about snakes and slime, they discussed sugar and spice. Uh, about the elves' toys factory, a clock also ticked down the days until December 25th. The elves worked round the clock, barely stopping for hot cocoa or cookies to meet the holiday deadline. All right, so it's no different than working at Walmart. Got it. Or Amazon. An assembly line cheerfully producing rocking horses, painting red and green. Not a single one with unknown to bite. Oh, not a single one was known to bite. Okay, so this is really just Amazon. Just people are on drugs because they're way too happy. On the opposite side of the factory, the elves, seamstresses, peddled oversized sewing machines to make teddy bears that give hugs, not smallpox. And in the bakery, felt fleet of bakers mixed sugar and flour for gingerbread men. Not an ounce of poison was added. Boring. On the hill overlooking Christmas Town, three mischievous trick-or-treaters watched the elves' per -pre preparations in disguise. Lock, shock, and barrel, and their walking bathtub had squeezed through the carved wooden door built in the hinter lens tree and tumbled down a swirling vortex of frosty air to find themselves on a snowy hill overlooking a village that twinkled with holiday lights. They had found the right door at last, Christmas Town. Locke stared down the mountain, shot, tripped himself just to be nesty. He kicked her. In return, the three of them and the bathtub slid down the hill until they landed with a tub in front of them. The biggest house in town with fur-scented smoke, fire scented, whatever the word is, puffing out the chimney and warm candlelight in the windows. They'd never seen anything like this magical land. Over the past few months, they had explored every other world through the mysterious doorways in the hinter, wood, uh, hinterlands trees. After they returned the Easter Bunny to his springtime meadow, they'd frightened baby chickens and smashed decorated eggs. They in, instigate a food fight in Thanksgiving Town, drenching one another with gravy and mashed potatoes. Each world was so wonderfully new and wonderfully easy to terrorize. It had been like taking Halloween candy from a baby. But Christmas Town. This was something truly special. Boogie Boogie's gang tiptoed over to peek in the toy factory windows where they spied on the elves packing up teddy bears. They sneered back in Halloween Town. Their friends were doing as much was much their friends were doing much better job stuffing boxes with creepy crawly toys. Christmas Town's elves fed the gloom, gloomed eight 
robust reindeers and lock, shock, and barrel all agreed that Dr. Finkelstein's skeletal animals were far superior. They didn't need to be fed at all. The hands of the clock above the toy factory were dangerously close to December 25th. Only two days left until Christmas. Enough dilly-dallying. The trick-or-treaters decided they had their fun wreaking havoc on the other holiday towns. Now it was time to capture Sandy Claus or face Jack's wrath. Shock hissed for her boys to be quiet. Oh, shock hushed for the boys to be quiet while she peeked into the window of each cottage, sleeping children, elves decorating trees. Uh, at last she found the right house inside a large man in a red suit was reading aloud a list of children's names to his wife who helped him decide who had been naughty and who had been nice. It was really him, the legend, the terror, Sandy Claus. Shock elbowed her conspirators to s s sign signal for them to put on their masks. Once they were fully in costume, they each clutch, uh, clutched a side of their giant black plastic trick-or-treat bag and snickered to themselves. Shock rung the doorbell. Its chime was a festive melody. And the next moment, the door swung open. Open, yeah, swung open, and they were looking straight into the rosy cheek face of that old devil Sandy Claus. Trick or treat, lock, shock, and barrel sung in unison. Sandy Claus, woolly white eyebrows knit together as he leant down for a closer look at the unfamiliar children. He was quite sure none of them were on the list of nice boys and girls he'd been going over with Mrs. Claus. Hmm. He asked Paradox. Perplexed. Now, the trick-or-treaters leapt up and threw the bag around Sandy Claus, making quick work of... Wrestling the confused king of Christmas Town into their walking bathtub as they roped up oh, as they roped up top of the bag struggling in the bathtub, shock giggled to herself. Naughty or nice, definitely naughty. Well that was a quick chapter. That is the end of chapter fourteen. And we'll be picking up on chapter 15 in the next uh, episode. That was uh, usually quick. Please remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye.